Uh, it feels like things are coming together in Zimbabwe. What's, what's, what's coming up? Yeah, so things are all coming together for us. This project has been um, you know, a, a steady progress for us over a number of years, but it, you know, we're reaching the, the critical end now. Um, we've released the seismic uh, results and, and, um, in the current license area. We've still got the results from this expanded license area that um, we agreed to with the government uh, a couple of months ago. But the well pad for Makuyu 1, uh, that's in construction at the moment, and the rig is being prepared to be mobilised um, at the end of this month to to uh, make its journey up to Zimbabwe. So, coming together now for this two well program, Makuyu One will be the first well that we drill, and then uh, one of the basin margin wells that um, that prospect selection is in progress. And yeah, we've got a two well program commencing in um, July. Fantastic, and I suppose it's one of those things you only know when you actually drill. But I mean, you know, in terms of what the seismic looks like, what sort of resources are you thinking about for those two worlds? So, the seismic that we, the infill seismic campaign that that we shot last year, uh, has been, um, you know, pretty encouraging in, in, in what it's uncovered. So, we infilled from Mobile's previous grid, and we've identified quite a substantial new horizon, uh, much shallower in the Makuyu target, um, which was previously named Muzurabani. So we've got six SAC targets that we'll be drilling. Uh, that we, we're having some independent work done by ERCE for a prospective resource upgrade. So that's work in progress at the moment, which will integrate all that new data. Uh, the old data, based on the on the mobile um, work that we reprocessed, was 8.2 trillion cubic feet and 247 million million barrels of condensate, which is, you know, equates to 1.6 billion barrels of oil equivalent in one prospect that we'll drill. So that will get. Um, you know, we'll get bigger with this additional target and, and horizon. And then the basin margin play is really interesting, this new play that we've identified, and that is um, along that southern margin near the rift shoulders. Looks very similar to the East African rift plays and how that unfolded in, in Kenya and Uganda, where you've got multiple sort of smaller uh, targets along those, but provides you with fantastic running room if, if one of those succeeds. So, yeah, very, very exciting to have, um, you know, two different play types that we'll be testing with this drilling campaign. In terms of sort of financing, obviously, you know, it's, it's a sort of a step change, isn't it, going from, uh, you know, the sort of doing the sort of preliminary work into sort of, you know, this, the, the actual operations. How, how, how does funding look? Are you, are you, are you happy to go into the, to, the, to the drilling campaign? Are you looking to raise more cash? So as an exploration company, obviously, we're, we're reliant on, uh, on the capital markets or partners, and we've maintained a, a sort of two-track strategy to, to either um, bring in a partner and um, or fund it through through the equity markets. Uh, I think they've been been pretty respondent to to our project. I think it's it's quite unique for for a junior to have something of the scale that we have in in um, in Kaborabasa and the Makuyu prospect. You know, it's going to be one of the largest uh, prospects that's going to be drilled in 2022 on a global basis. So that has um, you know a lot of attraction for for shareholders. Um, so we've had great support from the equity markets in in, in raising funding. So. You know, we're still in, in, in discussions on the on the farm art phase, and we we, we um you know we put out some information on that to the ASX uh, a few weeks ago on that process. So that two track process is still is still um, in progress, and we've got a little bit of time before we we need to make that decision. Um, but yeah, I, I think um, you know either option is still open to us. Sure, sure. And I suppose, you know, after, once you've drilled these two wells and, you know, obviously fingers crossed for the results, you know, but if, 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 if they are positive, what comes next for you guys? Uh, what comes next will be a, a, a pretty swift appraisal campaign. Um, we're lucky in that the rig, uh, Exola's rig 202 will be staying put um, in Zimbabwe after the campaign. They, they, they haven't um, got any, any uh, committed work after our program. So, and we've got some, um, some extra long leads that we've ordered. Uh, we had to be quite flexible when we, um, you know, when we took, took this on in, in our well design and we've ordered um, additional um, an additional wellhead and we've got enough casing that we can follow up with them with an immediate appraisal well so it will be um, you know pretty pretty quick order that will continue drilling and try and you know um, unlock further resources either appraising um, you know existing discoveries whether it is Maku or, or one of the basin margin wells if you know if both come in then we've got fantastic uh, fantastic problems ahead of us champagne problems <laughs> I like to call them um, and then, you know, looking at, at, at trying to progress it to, to monetization as quickly as possible. And, and we've got the, 
the, the, the agreements in place with government um, that will be signed in, in July with the Petroleum Production Sharing Agreement, which will enable that rapid monetization. We've got existing gas sale MOUs with, with customers in Zimbabwe awaiting. So it really is, um, you know, we'll be full steam ahead if, if, if we're fortunate enough to make a discovery. I suppose in terms of that sort of regulatory environment, you know, Zimbabwe has got a, you know, bit of a, bit of a sort of a, a, a you know, a bit of a murky past. I think, you know, people have you struggled to do business there. Hmm. How, how, how is it now? Obviously, there's a new president. Have, have things changed for the better? Should, should uh, investors still be worried? No, investors shouldn't be worried. I think uh, we, we, we've demonstrated since we acquired this project in, in, um, in 2018 when, with the government uh, change that we've been able to make very, very rapid progress in our project. If you, you, know, if you think of uh, a frontier exploration uh, jurisdiction like Zimbabwe that hasn't had any uh, legislation, hasn't had a well drilled in the country, um, for us to have gone and been able to acquire a project in, in 2018, advance and, and acquire infill seismic and get to a two-well drilling campaign inside of four years is pretty phenomenal. And that's because the government's been supportive. They've put in the right um, the right frameworks, both from a um, for, from a foreign investor's point of view. You know, you know there's there's no uh, obviously local um, oil and gas companies um, that can provide the capital to explore uh, in Zimbabwe. So they've put in the policies that have allowed us to invest, made our shareholders comfortable in in doing it. So it it the investment environment has changed, and um, you know it it has had that that reputation in the past. But I think. And it still lingers, um, you know, for for uh, for certain things. But I think what what we've done is there's a lot of people paying attention now because we've been able to make such rapid progress, which is really encouraging. And I, I suppose you know, look, thinking about that sort of potentially massive sort of gas resource. I mean, I think you know, historically people have been somewhat leery about uh, trying to develop gas, particularly onshore mm. in Africa. I mean, if you do find, you know, the sort of eight odd TCF of gas, it would be an incredible prize. But, but how do you go about sort of turning that into something that, you know, benefits your shareholders, benefits Zimbabwe? I suppose? Yeah, so from a, you know, in the event that we do discover multi TCFs of gas, we've got a plan to monetize it uh, not only domestically, but in the wider region as well. So we've, we've got existing gas cell MOUs with um, a fertilizer manufacturer and a gas to power developer. So that'll be the first step in the, in the domestic uh, build out of the project. But then there's also a lot of other industrial customers that'll benefit from it. You know, there's, there's platinum miners there that can't build refineries because they don't have the energy to, you know, to supply to it. Um, Zimbabwe's got a, a very rich industrial history and, and quite energy intensive, but has been hampered by the, the, the lack of affordable and reliable energy. So the domestic market will build up really well, but the regional market, and particularly the South African gas market, is um, you know is very large. So at the moment, supplied exclusively from onshore Mozambique, and those supplies are dwindling. And uh, you know you've got not only a gas shortage looming in South Africa, but a wider energy shortage caused by the retirement of coal-fired power, the lack of investment in, in um, generation capacity. So really, uh, gas to wire. Um, becomes a really uh, attractive option to, to monetize large volumes of gas into a, a very, very large power market in, in the wider region. And Zimbabwe is crucial in that Southern Africa power pool and the spine of it runs through Zimbabwe and all the, the um, cross-border electricity trading is, is run out of Harare. So we can export, generate power within Zimbabwe close to the project and then export it anywhere in, in the region from Cape Town all the way through to the Congo. So it is a very, very wide market and not, you know, I, th I think being onshore, we've again suffered from that perception of, of a lack of market and lack of infrastructure, but that's, you know, far from the case. We've got a lot of markets and great infrastructure to, you know, to move it to those markets. So, How, how have you found the conference? Have you enjoyed it? Conference has been great. It's great to be back, back here and, and, and um, you know, the team at Frontier have done a fantastic job putting on this conference. Um, this is uh, b back after 2019. Obviously, there's been a, a hiatus uh, for us, but great to be back in person and, and having uh, great networking opportunities, um, listening to some very good conversations. You always you always take away, you know, not multiple things from, from these sort of discussions and, and conferences. So it's been, been great. I think the mood has been a, lo a lot more upbeat. Um, you know, compared to previous years, I think there's, um, you know, there's a clear determination that the, the uh, energy companies here have to take on um, and, and, and challenge some of these narratives, particularly around, um, you know, the, the, the lack of support for, for oil and gas projects in, in Africa that are being, um, that, 
that's hampered development, hampering the industrialization of, of economies in Africa. Um, so so that, that conversation is beginning to change and, and, and that's been really encouraging and exploration's back on the agenda uh, as well. That's probably one of the key takeaways that's come out of this, this conference is that um, you know, people are looking forward again uh, and, and looking to replace reserves, um, open new, new basins. Uh, a lot of frontier drilling going on, which is which is really encouraging. So, yeah, been been a great conference and uh, great great to be back and uh, nice of the frontier team uh, to host us and, and have us involved. Fantastic, thank you, Scott. Thanks.